Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hope you guys are doing well. We hope you're doing super well. So this is a painting of Peter Dunov, and I was actually not aware of the prophecies that he gave us. And so thank you so much. Uh, a couple of you guys said, boy, what you are talking about sounds exactly like the prophecy of Peter Duna. Yeah, so it was interesting to go back and look through this and just sort of kind of go, wow. So he was a spiritual master and an inter interesting individual. And as you know, I've read, uh, we have read some of his writings, uh, they completely resonate, completely resonate with us. And so, you know, again, thank you for bringing this one up. Uh, this is one I missed. Yeah, this is a really good one, too. I really resonated with it. I feel drawn to him. Yeah, you know, it. Uh, it's weird looking at him, just, just looking at him. He kind of feels familiar and feels like family. And uh, do not look for happiness outside of yourself, the awakened seek happiness inside most definitely a spiritual guru and master and uh, here you see Peter Dunov he, he lived from 1864 to 1944 and he's recognized as a great spiritual master born in Bulgaria son of an Orthodox priest he intended to enter the church himself and traveled to the US where he studied, studied theology and medicine However, on his return to Bulgaria in 1895, he found he was unsu unsuited for the rigid institutions and doctrines of the Orthodox Church. You know, honestly, too, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, before I discovered girls, I thought I was going to perhaps go into the priesthood, too. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> and I realized that that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> Not in this lifetime. Um, but uh, I do believe I've had, I, I think, two of my most recent lifetimes as a monk. And then I have been told, after I had the uh, visions myself of it, um, that I've had a life as a Templar. So it, it, it reminds, you know, it's interesting because we, I do believe we run in spiritual circles. I think we have certain characteristic energies in us that carry over lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. And we kind of continue on this the same spiritual path. It might take us, you know, a little bit to find ourselves. But once we find ourselves, then we get off and running, trying to continue what we perhaps left off on in the last life in so many ways. Well, in this society, they do a really good job of making sure you forget who you are. So from 1900, he began to give public lectures that breathed new life into the traditional Christian doctrine. He founded a new movement to which he gave the name Universal White Brotherhood. And that's not white in a racist sense, it's in a purity sense. And I am familiar with that, and perhaps I must have read about him in the past, but somehow it just totally slipped my mind uh, to, yeah, yeah, it's just interesting. So he organized congresses with the helps of a group of disciplines, I'm sorry, disciples. Each summer, these congresses were held in the Rilla Mountains, where hundreds of disciples would form great circles to dance his sacred dance. And interesting as well there. Very interesting. You know, a whole lot of stuff that this guy wrote about really, really hit home. So he foreseeing political turmoil and persecution that would affect his country and challenge the brotherhood. He chose Mikhail Ayanov to take his teachings to France and ultimately to the wider world. And by 1937, his disciples numbered in the tens of thousands. So he was a gifted violinist and a composer of hundreds of melodies or mystical exercises. We'll have to look up some of that music. These melodies form the basis of the songs of the Universal White Brotherhood which are sung in brotherhood centers throughout the world, as we see some photos of them. You know, music is uh, central in so many ways, in so many traditions, to, you know, worship, uh, praise, um, kirtan, you know, in the Vedic uh, system as well. Well, music raises the vibration, I feel. Most definitely. So fascinating because there is a prophecy that he gave that was soon to come and that we're in now. And 
he talks of this immense wave of energy that's going to come and just hit everything. Which is, you know, kind of what we were talking about. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and you know, reading through this whole thing, uh, it feels like we, are, we have, must have tapped into the same source. And I know Cindy hasn't done the, the research I have done, which is a blessing because, you know, it's, there's nothing in her subconscious uh, where she has read something before this and that, and, you know, is pulling from that. Uh, quite the opposite. She's, she's tapping into perhaps, you know, the same source that he tapped into. So during the passage of time, the consciousness of man transversed a very long period of obscurity. The phase which the Hindus call the Kali Yuga is on the verge of ending. We find ourselves today at the frontier between two cycles, that of the Kali Yuga and of the new era that we are entering. A gradual improvement is already occurring in the thoughts, sentiments, and acts of humans, but everybody will soon be subjugated to divine fire that will purify and prepare them in regards to the new era. Thus, man will raise himself to a superior degree of consciousness indispensable to his entrance to the new life. And this is what one understands by ascension. Some decades will pass, and again, he passed in 1944, before this fire comes that will transform the world by bringing it a new moral. This immense wave comes from cosmic space and will inundate the entire earth and actually the solar system and and even more than that. All those who attempt to oppose it will be carried off and transferred elsewhere, although the inhabitants of this planet do not all find themselves at the same degree of evolution. The new wave will be felt by each of us, and this transformation will not only touch the earth, but the entire ensemble of the entire cosmos. The best and only thing that man can do now is turn towards God and improve himself consciously to elevate his vibratory level so as to find himself in harmony with the powerful wave that will soon submerge him. The fire of which I speak that accompanies this new conditions offered to our planet will rejuvenate, purify, reconstruct everything. The matter will be refined, your hearts will be liberated from anguish, troubles, incertitude, They will soon become luminous. Everything will improve, elevated. The thoughts, the sentiments, and negative acts will be consumed and destroyed. Your present life is slavery, a heavy prison. Understand your situation and liberate yourself from it. I tell you this, exit from your prison. It's really sorry to see so much misleading, so much suffering, so much incapacity to understand where one's true happiness lies. Everything that is around you will soon collapse and disappear. Nothing will be left of the civilization, nor its perversity. The entire earth will be shaken, and no trace will be left of this erroneous culture that maintains men under the yoke of the ignorance. Earthquakes are not only mechanical phenomena, their goal is to awaken the intellect and the heart of humans so that they liberate themselves from their errors and their follies, and that they understand that they are not the only ones in the universe. Our solar system is now transversing a region of the cosmos where a constellation that was destroyed left its mark, its dust. The crossing of a contaminated space is a source of poisoning, not only for the inhabitants of the Earth, but for the inhabitants of other planets of our galaxy. Only the suns are not affected by the influence of this hostile environment. The region is called the 13th zone, and one also calls it the zone of contradictions. Our planet was enclosed in this region for thousands of years, but finally we are approaching the exit of this space of darkness, and we are on the point of attaining a more spiritual reason, region where more evolved beings lived, live. So it's, it's fascinating. So that would really make a lot of sense of why we are exposed to these uh, dark demonic forces. This is where they inhabit. And so we are going now where they won't be able to go, and raising up and out. I feel like maybe it's their last hoorah where <laughs> where they're holding on as tight as they can, you know. And once we let go of our issues, we let go of that which is attached to us. And it's a painful process, but pain is growth. The earth is now following an ascending movement, and everyone should force themselves to harmonize with the currents of ascension. Those who refuse to subjugate themselves to this orientation will lose the advantage of good conditions that are offered in the future to elevate themselves. 
They will remain behind in evolution and must wait tens of millions of years for the coming of a new ascending wave. And this is why, to me, it feels like it's imperative that we we can't risk not making it. <laughs> because, uh, you know, spiritually, I mean, you are, I feel, better off leaving the physical body um, in, a, in a way in which you will be able to still ascend than to, to save the physical body, at least temporarily and only temporarily, um, and, and basically subjugate, sub, subject yourself to these negative energies that are here. So again, you know, so much makes so much sense. You know, it's just so obvious to me in so many ways so many quotes, you know, biblical quotes, non-biblical quotes, quotes from so many different great thinkers and and philosophies. This is what's meant by saving your soul. And, you know, we, we are in this critical time right now. There's nothing more imperative. That, that's why we cannot be pulled down into the negative energies that are all around us. We must purify ourselves. Yeah, we need to walk through it, and it's it's not an easy thing to do, but it, it's going to be a beautiful thing, you know, if you can just keep your eye on the prize. The Earth, the solar system, the universe are all being put in a new direction under the impulsion of love. Most of you still consider love as a derisory f- force, but in reality, it's the greatest of all forces. Money and power continue to be venerated, as if the course of your life depended upon it. In the future, all will be subjugated to love and all will serve it. But it is through suffering and difficulties that the consciousness of man will be awakened. The terrible predictions of the prophet Prophet Daniel written in the Bible relate to the epoch that is opening. There will be floods, hurricanes, gigantic fires, and earthquakes that will sweep away everything. Blood will flow in abundance. There will be revolutions, terrible explosions will resound in numerous regions of the earth. There where there is earth, water will come. There where there is water, earth will come. This is exactly what you were saying. Yeah, it's the folding in of the earth. Everything is going to be washed away. This also jives so much with what Casey saw and others as well. God is love. It's that simple. God is love. Yet God is not dogma and everything that separates us. There's no one set of words that you need to say. There's no one way that you need to you know, worship besides that way of love and compassion. That's it. It's that simple. You know, that's all we need to glean from it. Everything else is the trappings of man and ego. And so, you know, that's all going to pass away. And it's more than time for that to all pass away. It is definitely, you know, and you we can feel the energies rising within us. Our bodies are changing. A lot is changing. And I, I think that they keep this education from us to try to keep us in the dark. So as we said, God is love, yet we are dealing here with a chastisement, a reply from nature against the crimes perpetrated by man since the night of time against his mother, the earth. So there you go. You know, it's interesting how uh, so many have been taught to worship Father God, God the Father, and yet they almost view the mother in a negative light, and that is just insanity. So revere both. Respect Mother Earth. Give thanks for her, because you're a cell in her body. Why would you rebel against, you know, the, the entirety of the body as an individual cell? Well, that's a cancer. And yeah, you know, we know how destructive cancer is. So be not a cancer, be not a virus, be in harmony, balance, and equanimity. And it also alludes to love being a kind of a force. And I look at love being almost like a technology that can be very tangible and used to heal people. After these sufferings, those that will be saved, the elite in a positive sense, not the elite in the negative sense that we know, will know the golden age harmony and unlimited beauty thus keep your peace and your faith when the time comes for suffering and terror because it's written that not a hair will fall from the head of the just don't be discouraged simply follow your work of personal perfection you have no idea of the grandiose future that awaits you a new earth will soon see a day soon see the day 
In a few decades, the work will be less exacting, and each one will have time to consecrate spiritual, intellectual, and artistic activities. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We are in a form of slavery. The monetary system is all about slavery. We need to stay, step out of the monetary system. What are we going to do? Well, then we'll have time to, to really cultivate the spiritual, the intellectual, and artistic expressions in life. That's what we should be doing. And that is beautiful because we are co-creators and we should spend our time co-creating in positive manners that feed the soul, not slaving away so that uh, some can live lives of luxury and really they're not happy anyway because all they're doing is cultivating greed which it doesn't have love in it only love brings true happiness and that's yeah absolutely agree with that one the question of rapport between man and woman will finally be resolved in harmony each one having the possibility of following their aspirations the revel the relations of couples will be founded on reciprocal respect and esteem Humans will voyage through the different planes of space and break through intergalactic space. They will study their functioning and they will rapidly be, no, be able to know the divine world to fuse with the head of the universe. The new era is that of the sixth race. Your predestination is to prepare yourself for it, welcome it, and live it. The sixth race will build itself around the idea of fraternity. There will be no more conflicts of personal interests. The single aspiration of each one will be to conform himself to the law of love. The sixth race will be that of love. A new continent will be formed for it. It will emerge in the Pacific, so that the Most High can finally establish his place on the planet. The founders of this new civilization, I call them the brothers of humanity or the children of love, they will be unshakable for the good and they will represent a new type of men. Men will form a family as a large body and each people will represent an organ in the body. In the new race, love will manifest in such a perfect manner that today's man can only have a very vague idea. So it's going to be a totally new system. It won't be a capitalistic system. It will not be a totalitarian system either. It's going to just operate out of love and unity. And that's exactly what we need. You know, this whole system that we're in is one that is used to create greed and, and to trigger uh, lust for power, for control. And that's antithetical to what's coming. The earth will remain a terrible uh, a terrain favorable to struggle, but the forces of darkness will retreat, and the earth will be liberated from them. Humans seeing that there is no other path will engage themselves in the path of new life, that of salvation, and their senseless pride some will, to the end, hope to continue on earth a life that the divine order condemns. But each one will be finished, but be finished by understanding that the direction of the world doesn't belong to them. A new culture will see the light of day, and it will rest on three principal foundations, the elevation of woman, the elevation of the meek and the humble, and the protection of the rights of man. The light, the good, and justice will triumph. It's just a question of time. The religion should be purified. Each contains a particle of the teaching of the masters of light, but obscured by the incessant supply of human deviation. All the believers will have to unite and put themselves in agreement with one principle, that of placing love as the basis of all belief. Whatever it may be, love and fraternity is the common base. The earth will soon be swept by extraordinary rapid waves of cosmic electricity. A few decades from now, beings who are bad and lead others astray will not be able to support the intensity. They will thus be absorbed by cosmic fire that will consume the bad they possessed. They will then repent, because it is written, Each flesh shall glorify God. Our mother, the earth, will get rid of men that don't accept the new life. She will reject them like damaged fruit. Well, just like the body with a cancerous cell purging it out, or, or the immune system attacking a virus, they will soon not be able to reincarnate on this planet, criminals included. Only those that possess love in them will remain. There is not any place on earth that is not dirtied with human or animal blood. Therefore, she must submit to a purification. And it is for this that certain continents will be immersed, while others will surface. Men do not suspect to what dangers they are menaced by. They continue to pursue futile objectives and seek pleasure. 
On the contrary, those of the sixth race will be conscious of the dignity of their role and respectful of each one's liberty. They will nourish themselves exclusively from products of the vegetal realm. So there won't be any more eating meat as, as it was something of the past. Their ideas will have the power to circulate freely as the air and the light of our days. The words, if you are not born again, apply to the sixth race. Please read chapter 60 of Isaiah as it relates to the coming of the sixth race of love. After the tribulations, men will cease to sin and, and will find again the path of virtue. The climate of the planet will be moderated everywhere, and the brutal variations will no longer exist. The air will once again become pure, the same for the water. The parasites will disappear, men will remember previous incarnations, and they will feel the pleasure of noticing that they are finally liberated from their previous condition. In the same manner that one gets rid of parasites and dead leaves on the vine, so act the evolved beings to prepare men to serve the God of love. And they give them good conditions to grow and to develop themselves. And to those that want to listen, they say, do not be afraid. Still a little more time and everything will be all right. You are on the good path. May he that wants to enter the new culture study, consciously work, and prepare. Thanks to the idea of fraternity, the earth will become a blessed place and will not wait. That will not wait. But before, great sufferings will be sent to awaken the consciousness. Sins accumulated for thousands of years must be redeemed. The ardent wave emanating from on high will contribute to the liquidating of karma of all people. The liberation can no longer be postponed. Humanity must prepare itself for great trials that are inescapable and are coming to bring, bring an end to egoism. Under the earth, something extraordinary is preparing itself. A revolution that is grandiose and completely inconceivable will manifest itself soon in nature. God has decided to redress the earth, and he will do it. It is the end of an epoch. A new order will substitute the old, an order in which love will reign on earth. So that was um, 1944 that that was written. Yeah, and it looks like things are going to happen in increments, and they're going to be kind of specific increments. And I, I do sense that our bodies are definitely changing, where a lot of us are remembering our incarnations. But I, I think it's going to become extremely clear. And then humans are going to be a little more fluid with each other, like kind of like flow like water. And these are some of his quotes. Do not look for happiness outside yourself. The awakened see happiness inside. Very, very, very true. If you pursue happiness, you're an ordinary person. If happiness pursues you, you're an extraordinary person. Do not chase happiness. Let it chase you. Very good things to meditate on. A person who asks of love of others but does not give, him, give himself it cannot be loved. Always be the first to give love. And it shall be given to you. As long as you do not give your heart first, you will be far from love. If you do not fling old ideas out of your mind, you cannot give birth to new ones. And that is so critical. And that's one of those things that keeps us in these loops. Love resolves all contradictions. Without love, man cannot make sense of his existence. You know, that one, if you cannot fling love out of your mind, you cannot give birth to new ones. That goes along with yeah. with stuff, too. Like, I noticed when I was cleaning out my stuff, I had this strong craving to get rid of my things. And it's like every bag of stuff that I got rid of, I got room in my mind to um, just work with. It was kind of cool. Well, the same thing with me, you know, in uh, 2007, uh, left the house I was in for almost 20 years, and we literally threw two dumpsters of things away. And then in 2009, after getting a divorce, you know, I just drove away, uh, leaving, you know, house and all sorts of goodies with what I could put in my car, and that happened twice more after that where basically it's just whatever was in my tiny little toyota uh economy car is what i took and left everything behind including things that were precious to me uh but it's been a purge and this is the time we're in it, it's time to purge if you value your things more than your own soul that's not going to help you and if we truly believe the teachings of these real masters of light and love, 
then just like the rich man that says to Christ, you know, I've done this, I've done that, I've, I've done all I could do. What more can I do? And Christ says, well, then go and sell all your belongings. Give all, all the proceeds to the poor and come with me. And he couldn't do it. And that's the majority of people. They couldn't do it. Honestly, I feel so good about um, being partnered with a person that understands me to such a high degree. And uh, we, we understand each other, which is such a blessing. And I understand uh, that's, that's a rarity in this world. Uh, and I always wanted to just operate on a, a donation basis. Like the last five, six years, it's been building in me. Just trust. Just trust in the universe. You know, just trust everything's going to be okay. And, uh, you know, they demonetized the first channel. But, you know, we're still being provided for. And really, physical things are never going to mean anything when you get down to it. So, you know, she agreed to operate on just a donation basis and we're still being provided for. So it shows you if you operate out of love and you operate out of the purity of intention and heart, you'll be okay. More than okay. Because what's coming right now, it's all about purging all the old away. There's not going to be anything left of the old. Everything, this old system is dying and it has to die. It has to go. But yet, the new system will not be brought in by negative emotions, by hatred, by anger, by force. It has to be birthed through a change in consciousness. It does, and, and that's really what's happening right now. I mean, so many of us are going through so many different things, and, you know, it's all about growth, ultimately. You know, that's the bottom line. It's about our our um our soul growth which is so so important right now you know taking good care of yourself is really important um and that will allow you to help take care of other people even even better if you take really good care of yourself so there's that so guys let's thank you again for your support on both uh, patreon and also on ko-fi and and here on youtube as well take heart because ultimately uh, it's going to be a beautiful new world mm -hmm. oh it's going to be wonderful god bless and namaste god bless guys namaste